So guys, this is DC5 Brandon. I'm just about to take this car to the shop and get an anti-gravity battery installed. Uh, I c contacted anti-gravity and asked them what type of battery was best for my, day, uh, not a daily driven Porsche, but a Porsche that's driven on the weekend and still has all its full accessories, radio, AC, all that stuff. Uh, also have an aftermarket stereo in it and they recommended this H6 Group 48 battery. Uh, as you see there, it's 12.8 volts, 40 amp hours, and 1500 crank amps. So we're gonna try this battery out. Hopefully everything will work fine. Some of the initial batteries that people used, they had problems with them. Uh, sometimes when it gets really cold, I hear that they're, they might have trouble starting you have to kind of get them coaxed <laughs> into starting, like maybe uh, turning on the headlights first for a few minutes uh, on a really cold day to get the battery warmed up so it'll start. Uh, so we'll try this out. I've got the stock battery in there. Oh, the main reason I'm going to this battery, it's a lithium ion battery if you didn't notice there. So it's much lighter than a lead acid battery that's in the car here. Uh, I don't know how much of this battery weighs. I'm going to weigh it when they take it out, but I believe the report's between 50 and 55 pounds for this battery. So I weighed this one, and I don't know if it's accurate. I think the manufacturer said it's around 15 to 20 pounds, but when I weighed it in the box, it was like 11, 10 to 11 pounds. So that is a huge difference from going from a 50 pound battery to like a 10 or 11 pound battery. Even if it was 20 pounds, that's still a 30 pound uh, weight savings over the stock. So that's pretty ineffective way to save weight. As you, some of you Porsche fans know, if you do other things to save weight on this car, it could be very costly. So, you know, the battery is about $700. So $700 to get about 30 pounds taken off your Porsche, I think is a pretty good deal. Uh, the battery is supposed to have a um, five year warranty. And one important note is that you cannot use a regular trickle charger or ten battery tender on these, these special batteries. Uh, those, the regular trickle charger tenders seem to overcharge these batteries uh, and it might damage the battery so you really don't want to do that uh, they recommend the manufacturer recommends a lithium phosphate 4 or a, a life op4 specific tender to use for their lithium ion restart batteries um, one last thing to note, which I'm not really counting on, but it, it is a good peace of mind, is that these batteries have a built-in restart function, as you see there on the box. So it comes with two remotes, but it's also got a button on the battery, and you can use the remote to jump start itself. <laughs> so it's supposed to be able to jump start itself if it runs out of battery, uh, out of power, juice, or charge. Also, these batteries have a built-in battery management system in them. Uh, it's supposed to regulate the voltage. It's supposed to work with the electronics of the car that they're installed and maintain the proper voltage. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I might mention in the next part of the video. I think it's like 12.5 volt, I think is how what the volts that it maintains when it's in the car. Um, and just like a normal battery, you know, if you leave these in the car, they're they meant to, they're meant to hold a charge up to a year. You're supposed to check them every six months. Uh, but like all cars, if you have a parasitic drain on these batteries, just like normal batteries, you're supposed to disconnect them so they don't use all the juice. All right, it's been a couple of weeks now since I had the battery replaced. As you can see, it's maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, as I said before, this is a 40 amp hour battery. And yeah, so just, show you the one feature there 
there's the button there you press in case the battery goes dead. It's got a uh, restart functionality built into the battery so it jumps itself off if you run out of juice. And yeah, the installation took less than an hour. My installer uh, hooked up diagnostic to it, make sure everything was working okay. Uh, I've had it installed for a couple of weeks. I've driven the car about six or seven times. Uh, everything's normal. Everything's working fine so far. So uh, my experience with the car, you can't really notice just normal driving that the car is over 30 pounds lighter. But just to give some perspective, uh, this battery was $700 and some people they do things to the Porsche to save weight. Uh, one of those things I like to use the Cayman R as an example. The Cayman R has lightweight aluminum doors. Uh, that saves a total of 33 pounds, uh, which is, it'd be pretty silly to replace your doors just because you wanted to replace, you wanted to save 33 pounds. But another example is the Sport Bucket carbon fiber seats which, as far as I know, you can't buy them new on Suncoast anymore, but you can get them used, and a current set of the carbon fiber seats for the 987.2 Cayman recently sold on Bring a Trailer for $700. So if you factor the $700, and that saves only 23 pounds. So if you think this saves between 30 and 35 pounds, and those carbon fiber bucket seats are only 23 pounds, that's a pretty big deal. Um, and also, considering this car only weighed about 29.75, uh, or 29.80, something around there from the factory uh, curb weight, uh, this is savings over 1%. So I've saved about 1% uh, the total car weight by repla just replacing my old battery with this one. A uh, couple other things to note, uh, I did a, a search just out of curiosity, a replacement battery like an expensive, like if I've got an Optima battery, lead acid battery to replace this one, it's half the cost. And this thing has, it, it has a little less uh, amp hours, I'm not sure, I haven't noticed any difference in operating the car, it seems to work fine. But the uh, Optima battery has 80 no, it's, I think it's 70 amp hours, and this one is 40 amp hours. Uh, but I think everything works fine. I think maybe if I took a super long trip, maybe that would come into play. But uh, so far, so good. Everything works fine. Um, another thing to make note, as far as the other differences that you notice, uh, my old battery was, I think I looked at it, it I've, I've got some specs. I took a picture of the battery, and I think it was about 900 cranking amps, give or take 50 or so, uh, and this is 1500 cranking amps. So a pretty big difference, about 30% more cranking amps. The old battery starting the car would be like, dee 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 dee, vroom, and then the car would start. This one's like, dee dee dee, boom. <laughs> it's, it's pretty quick. It, it starts, it, it, it cranks over the engine twice, it seems like it's twice as fast as it did before. So that's that's pretty impressive. Um, but other than that, uh, I would say as far as driving, I took a local off-ramp pretty fast. I have a local off-ramp on the interstate that's a sweeping corner, left corner. And I took it going about 75, it's not really that fast for that type of corner, but uh, not near the limit. It's near the limit, but not not that close. And from what I noticed, before I would say that the, when the car's turning, it would be like, I would say you could feel resistance in the steering wheel, like slight understeer when you reached about 70 to 75, you would feel a slight resistance in the steering wheel. The car telling you, okay, you're reaching, you're near the limit. Uh, when I get to 75, I, the steering wheel was still, still super light. So maybe that's a result of taking some weight off the front end. Maybe that's the result of the 30 pounds taken off the front end, I'm not sure. But I didn't drive it any faster to see when the, the resistance was gonna come into play with the steering. I didn't, I didn't bother to test that. Maybe if I get on the track, I test that out a little more. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of my experience after owning this new battery for the last couple of weeks. Um, of course, if I have any problems, uh, I'll try to make a YouTube video and and probably inform the community uh, what problems I had. But yeah, so far so good. Um, 
I'll keep in touch. Until next time, see ya.